Now, from CBS 4 News, this is Facing South Florida with Jim DeFeedy. Good morning, I'm Jim DeFeedy, and welcome to Facing South Florida. On almost every level of government, this past week has been crazy. In Washington, the revelations contained in the new Bob Woodward book paint a view of the president that is both disturbing and yet not surprising. And then came the New York Times op-ed, bolstering the notion of a resistance movement taking place inside the White House. As you can imagine, the president was not happy. The latest act of resistance is the op-ed published in the failing New York Times by an anonymous, really an anonymous, gutless coward. You just look. He was, uh, nobody knows who the hell he is, or she, although they put he, but probably that's a little disguised. That means it's she. But for the sake of our national security, the New York Times should publish his name at once. I think their reporters should go and investigate who it is. That would actually be a good scoop. That would be. It's now become a para game to wonder who the op-ed writer is. More than two dozen Trump officials have denied it. But remember, Mark felt denied he was deep throat for 30 years before finally admitting to that. Spurred by these stories, this has led to a lot of loose talk in the media about invoking the 25th Amendment. Now let's be clear, you can believe the president is venal and amoral, and certainly many people do, but you cannot remove someone from office, in effect undo the results of an election, because you think the president is a bad man. Bad people have been president in the past, and bad people will likely be president again. But as if it wasn't enough, former President Obama stepped up with a rebuke of Trump on his own as he addressed the New York Times op-ed. And by the way, the, the claim that everything will turn out okay because there are people inside the White House who secretly aren't following the president's orders. <laughs> That is not a check. I'm being serious here. That's not how our democracy is supposed to work. These people aren't elected. They're not accountable. They're not doing us a service by actively promoting 90% of the crazy stuff that's coming out of this White House and then saying, don't worry, we're preventing the other 10%. That's not how things are supposed to work. This is not normal. In Florida, we are now less than 60 days until the biggest and most consequential midterm election in my lifetime. In the governor's race, Andrew Gillum and Ron DeSantis announced their picks for lieutenant governor. Ron DeSantis chose Miami State Representative Jeanette Nunez. She will help with Hispanic voters and with women, acting as a moderating influence on DeSantis's conservative views. The Democrats went a little different. In selecting Chris King, Andrew Gillum is doubling down on his progressive agenda. This is the youngest and most liberal ticket in the state's history. Picking King signals this race is about expanding the base, getting new voters to the polls instead of trying to lure moderate Republicans and independents. Later in the show, we will talk to a woman who has been working to get new voters to the polls. But first, while so much attention is focused on the governor's race, I think the race for who will replace Pam Bonney as the state's attorney general is just as important. Earlier today, I spoke to Democratic nominee for attorney general, Sean Shaw. Talk to me about what happens from here for you. Well, we make our case to the uh, people of Florida, and this is a uh, cycle where people are going to have a stark choice uh, between myself and Ashley Moody. I mean, we don't agree on a lot of things. Uh, Ashley Moody has essentially said she's an extension of Pam Bondi. She wants to continue what's been going on, and I've made the case on the trail. I'm the exact opposite. You know, this is this is an office that is going to change come November when I'm elected. We're going to be aggressive. We're going to hold everyone accountable, no matter who you are, and we're coming after bad actors. Well, you talk. You had a press conference this week where you were out in front of uh, Trump Tower and, right. and talking about how if you're Attorney General, you will begin investigations into, into his business practices here. Talk to me about that. What do you think is going on with the President that the Attorney General needs to get involved with Listen, in Florida? Listen, the emoluments clause, uh, that's a fancy word for saying you cannot profit from the presidency. And there are Attorney Generals around the country who have already instituted certain actions against the President uh, on behalf of the emoluments clause. You know, who's staying in Trump Tower? Why are they staying there? How much money are you making personally from people staying in Trump Tower? Are some of the cases going on? What
what do your tax returns say? These are things that need to be looked at. Well, you, you, were, su you were suggesting even so far as to suggest that there could be some money laundering going on with regard to some of the Trump properties. Money, I mean, money laundering. Also, what's going on with the charities? I mean, there's there's multiple reports that the charities that are Trump charities are anything but charitable. That some of those uh, some of those monies are being used to things that aren't charitable. Uh, those need to be investigated. They need to be looked at. That's what attorney generals do. Uh, if you look and don't find anything, that's one thing. But you certainly ought to be looking. Well, should you make the case? But should you be arguing that there may be money laundering going on? What's your good faith basis to even raise that as a suspicion? There are multiple news reports, uh, Jim, about what's going on with regard to who's staying, <coughs> who's staying at Trump Towers, who are purchasing all the penthouses there, Russian oligarchs. Let's look at it. Clearly, the American people are entitled to know whether uh, their president is in violation of the United States Constitution and the Emoluments Clause. And listen, for the first time ever, the president had to answer a lawsuit regarding the Emoluments Clause. That's the first time in history the attorney generals of Maryland and D.C. filed the lawsuit, uh, and the president had to respond. This is not a frivolous, weird lawsuit. This is something that has uh, has teeth, and we're going to get into this. The attorney general in Texas is also suing the, the federal government over Obamacare, trying to knock down the, some of the last pillars of Obamacare. Pam Bondi has joined in with Texas in that lawsuit. You're saying that if you're elected, you will withdraw from that and actually go on the other side. Talk to me what's at stake in that in that particular court case and why folks in Florida should care about a court case in Texas. It is your access to the Affordable Care Act. I mean, how long can your children stay on health care? The pre-existing conditions, all the best parts of the Affordable Care Act are in danger. I mean, I, 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 several Republican attorneys general have sued uh, and are trying to get the ACA totally invalidated. I believe that... Uh, so even the part about pre-existing conditions, which everyone, which even other Republicans say, oh yes, we need to cover pre-existing conditions. They are conditions. trying to invalidate the entire thing. The minute I'm elected, I will leave that lawsuit because I believe people are entitled to uh, the protections of pre-existing health care and what insurance companies can pick and choose and all the things that are good about the Affordable Care Act. This is just a, it's a political, um, it's a political fight that's going on and people's health care is in, uh, in danger. Well, let's talk about the political aspect of this. It seems to me that in recent years, the attorney general position has become very politicized, that it's on both the right and the left, whether you look at Eric Schneiderman and what he is, what he tried to do in in New York, or you look at what Pam Bondi has done in Florida. It almost seems as if you you see very partisan natures of attorney generals' offices. I don't know. You some of the things that you're saying about investigating the president would suggest you would continue that way. Is that a dangerous trend, though, for the attorney general to be so politicized? Jim, I'm going to tell you that it is not politicized in the office, right? What I'm what I the things I'm telling you are really the law. The law is what the law is, and I. I've made the case to the people of Florida, I intend to be an aggressive attorney general, but one that holds everyone accountable under the law, and one that's very aggressive about that. That's not partisan. That is that is enforcing the law, and listen, I may believe something different than my opponent with regard to what the law is, and how to enforce it, and how to be aggressive about it, but that's why we're out here making the case. I don't think it is politicizing it at all. You know, for example, I make a case that I intend to go after the legislature for uh, their, their failure to implement a lot of these constitutional amendments. That's not partisan. 60, 70, 75 percent of the people approve these constitutional amendments. The legislature doesn't implement Give me an them. Example. Amendment one dollars. Uh, your doc stamp money ought to go to purchase environmentally sensitive mm -hmm. lands. Medicinal cannabis. 74 percent of the voters said they wanted sick people to have access to it, and the government is doing everything they can to slow walk it. When I am elected and I file a lawsuit to make sure that that amendment is implemented, that's not partisan. That's really implementing what 74 percent of the voters want. But it is the level of activity and aggressiveness that is different. Let's let's take a step back for a second. Your election on uh, on Tuesday as a Democratic or the previous Tuesday about de as a Democratic nominee. What message are voters sending on the Democratic side when it comes to this race, both in terms of selecting Andrew Gillum, selecting yourself, Nikki Freed, on down the line in terms of the cabinet officers that they've chose to run? What are you hearing on, on the Democratic side, and what do you think voters overall will be hearing towards November? Well, I certainly, listen, if you didn't get the message loud and clear that Democrats want something different and we want something new and we want something fresh, that is the slate that we elected. I mean, instantly, Florida has the most diverse slate
slate in the country. That happened Tuesday instantly. It's a historic slate, not only because of the diversity of what we look like and our gender and our religion, but what we think and how we believe Florida ought to move forward. Uh, but what I encounter, certainly when I'm talking about my race, is people want a fighter. People want someone that's going to go and hold everyone accountable, no matter who they are, from someone committing fraud on the street uh, with regard to Medicaid, to the legislature, to the president. It doesn't matter who you are. You ought to be held accountable. And people want uh, want to know that the attorney general is willing to do that and willing to be aggressive and fight about it. I mean, that's part of the problem I have with the current attorney general. Uh, what's, what's Pam doing other than auditioning to be on Fox? People want someone that is aggressive and holding everyone accountable. And listen, you're not going to get along with everybody as attorney general. That's okay. That's the nature of the job. I'm running to be your lawyer. Who do you want to be your lawyer? Someone that wants to go up there and be aggressive and fight on your behalf or someone that wants to act like they're the general counsel to the Republican Party? That's what you're going to be able to choose from when we come November. Okay, keep it right here. When we come back, more with the Democratic candidate for attorney general, Sean Shaw.